we've got something really special for you. This is Savage Model 342A chambered in 22 Hornet. These were made between 1950 and 1955. This one I acquired recently and it needs some love. I don't know if you can tell, but uh, the bluing is just all but wiped away on it. So we're gonna go ahead and rust blue this. We're gonna rip the action out of the stock. We're gonna remove all the hardware because it's got double duty here. If you look right about, right about there, we've got a major web crack going on in the stock right where the recoil lug is. And it's not uncommon for these savages because you know, they are, they were cheap guns and there was a lot of them where they were just used and abused and taken out hunting year after year after year. And uh, the action screws get loose and they tend to crack. It's just the way it is. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna strip it. We're gonna wipe the bluing off. We're gonna strip the stock down. We're gonna epoxy it back together, re-blue the action and uh, maybe make it look pretty again, make it into a nice shooter. So. I hope you join me. If you like this kind of stuff, leave me a like and comment and uh, also subscribe if you're new. I'd love to have you around. I, I try to post some shorts, but this is the kind of long content I make and I also make stuff about cars. I don't know if you can tell, but uh, we've got all kinds of toolboxes here and I work on lots of cars. So yeah, let's do it. I don't want to waste any more of your time, so let's get into it. We gotta get this action ripped out of this stock. First thing we wanna do is we wanna get this scope off because I'm really not gonna touch this. Pull the trigger, bolt comes out. So the next thing, we've gotta get trigger guard off. We've gotta get the action screws out. Now, anytime I'm taking action screws out, I like to hold the action into the stock. Like I said before, this stock already has trouble. So I really don't wanna put any more strain on it. We're gonna re-blue this as well. Best way to remove bluing, believe it or not, is vinegar. It takes about five minutes and all this will be gone. You can also sandblast it or just sand it if you want. For what I do, it's, it's easiest for me just to uh, drop it in a pot of vinegar. I don't wanna re-blue the trigger here, the trigger group. And the only way to get these off is to completely disassemble them, which is no big deal. Well, I mean, it's a pain in the butt. You just want to keep an eye on the orientation of the sear and everything is so the trigger and the sear. So So with the screws, I don't typically rust glue them. I typically just light them on fire, put flame blue on them. The last pin is out and that's for the sear. There's gonna be a spring on the sear. Just have to remember which way it goes. And that's what's nice about recording everything. The action set it back. We're gonna take the stock. We gotta get all of this hardware off. Okay, somebody decided that was the way to go about it. So I want to get all the oil stripped off of this just because of the type of repair that I'm doing to it. Here's what we're dealing with, ready? Oh my goodness gracious. Does not look good at all. So now we got to take these parts over into my wonderful vat. We got to decide what we're going to blue and I can tell you like this really high quality, high dollar vat of uh, vinegar that we have here. But anytime you want to remove bluing, all you got to do is put it in an acid. 
holy bright light. All you have to do is put it in an acid. You get an acid on it and you let it sit, even a real light one like vinegar, and that bluing's gone. It'll be down to nothing. And from there, then you can just go ahead and start uh, start filing out any pits or sanding it or whatever, whatever you think you need to do. Um, I'm probably not gonna draw file this. I'm just gonna sand it. So you're gonna lose your bananas watching how fast this works. All you do, bring your barrel over. Once you do this, there's no going back. You can't say, uh-oh, I'm just kidding. This was a joke. No, it's not a joke. It's for real. Here we go. No going back now. Even if you pulled it out, it's done for. And you can actually see already. See all that wonderful patina? That wasn't bluing. It was oil-coated rust. That's how fast. And that's why it's so important to clean your rifles often. But yeah, we'll give that a couple minutes and uh, get back at it. Okay, <clears throat> so if you're gonna use the vinegar trick, what will happen is it'll wipe it all away. There's just nothing left. It's down to bare steel, which is perfect. Because it's an acid, you're gonna want to do a really good rinse in water before you start sanding. Otherwise, it's just gonna rust on you and it's gonna burn the shit out of your hands and you don't want that. So, next step is take the action and all your parts out, run them to a sink or a bucket of water, anything you got, and just rinse the hell out of it. Maybe a good idea to run a brush down through the bore. That's up to you. Um, it, for, for me, I'm gonna have this all done in a day. So, any kind of rusting that would happen to the bore would not be enough to pit it anyway, so no big deal. Okay, so like I said, don't mind my dirty sink, it washes dirty hands. Ain't no thing. We've got this. Back over to the workbench. When you're rust bluing, the finish of the steel is really important. When you're bluing, when you blue something, you're not putting a coating on the steel. What you're actually doing is converting the outer layer of steel to rust and then you're going to boil it. And what that does is it creates an oxidized layer that is sealed so it can't rust anymore. Old blue is, is not a bluing job. It is, but it's not. It's, it is a coating on the outside of the steel, and that's why it's so easy to wipe away. Hot bluing, you're actually dipping the gun down the side of caustic salts, and that's what does all your conversion process. It converts the outside layer to an oxide. But that's what, not what we're doing today. I'm gonna add an acid to this, and it will bloom this horrible, ugly red rust, and then we're gonna dump it in a conversion tank which is just distilled water, boiling distilled water, and it will convert it to a bluing. Anyway, we're gonna go ahead and start with some sandpaper, some 180 grit. We'll work all the way up to 600 grit. I kinda want a nice polished finish on this. When I've done rifles and shotguns and um, all manner of steel, this is what I've used. After doing lots of research, I went ahead and found this company called Laurel Mountain Forge. And uh, it's actually got a degreaser in it, so you can handle it with bare hands. And it is supposed to work really well. I've never used it, so we're going to do it together. We're going to do it together, and uh, yeah. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's get to sanding. The barrel is done, right? It's ready to be blued. The only thing that I'm gonna do, I don't have to with this particular stuff that I bought with this Laura Mountain Forge. I don't have to degrease this, but 
This is a very painful and long process, so I would be stupid not to. I feel like I've been recording forever. So barrel done. Moving on. So the sanding is all done. If you want to see, look at how beautiful it is. Oh my god. I know. I still haven't decided whether I'm going to blue this bolt or not. Trigger guard, done. Mag catch, done. Front sight, done. Rear sight, done. Barrel band, done. So, we're all done with that. Now what I have to do Degrease them and uh, put on some gloves. I know I don't have to. I don't have to. It says right in the instructions, you don't have to wear gloves, but I'm gonna. But I'm gonna be, you know, a little bit less careful about it. I'm not gonna worry about it so much. So any other time that I've ever done this, I've used like cardboard boxes or um, steel cabinets, which then I also had to supply it with heat and water. Typically when you do this kind of job, it takes like four hours for it to rust, which is just way too damn long, considering that you have to rust it, boil it, rust it, boil it, rust it, boil it, like four times before you get the, your desired finish, right? So what I do is I add my solution and then I add it to a cabinet with heat and moisture. And that speeds up the process quite a bit. Gets you down to about 45 minutes to an hour for rusting. Typically, I don't know how this stuff is going to work out for, with, with that. But typically, it's about an hour. So, after about an hour, I'll pull it out. And usually, then I boil it. So, see how it goes. I'll show you my little setup here. So, this is my Cerakote oven. As you can see... It's about 110 degrees in there now, maybe a little bit less. It's about 100, I think. 99, 99 degrees in there right now. I'm gonna hang the barrels in here and hopefully I get enough height. Yep, just enough. I'll hang this in here just like this, just like, just like that, and uh, we'll get it rusted up. This is the point in the process where you go, oh my God, I just ruined the gun. I took all the factory finish off and I want to die because if I stop now this thing is now worthless and it gets even worse when it's completely covered in rust you go oh my god throw it in the garbage throw it in the fucking garbage but don't do that this is when you got to buckle down hang in there it's gonna be fine don't worry it's gonna be fine don't worry it's gonna be fine. Next step is gonna be getting these hung. I'll show you that. We'll get them hung and uh, start getting prepped for the uh, brake clean, acetone, carb cleaner. All those would work just fine. You don't have to, but it's a good idea. This is when things either get real or real boring. So what we're gonna do now, we're over at the workbench over here. I'm gonna start pulling the guns out. We're gonna start wiping them off with the acetone and we're gonna add some of the bluing. Oh boy, here we go. I need gloves. They're right next to you. What are you doing over here? You're supposed to be helping me. The most common color of microfiber wag is yellow. So yellow's acetone. Don't forget it. One of the most crucial parts about this whole process, whenever you go to apply your bluing solution, you cannot overlap it. If you overlap it, it'll copper plate and you will be screwed. You gotta strip it, start over. So, remember where you start and as little overlapping as possible. That's the goal. I've never used this stuff before, it might explode. You can't overlap it and you don't want any streaks. If you get any, if you get any runs, you're also screwed. So you've got to be really careful with how much you apply. And let it cook for a while, and the moisture and heat.
I'm a pessimist. I don't really believe in anything until it works. So. Well, that's it. That's, that's as simple as that. So now, we're going to let them sit in here. I wish I had a little bit of steam going on. Maybe it might not work. Maybe it's pretend. Like potassium. So now, I don't got a whole lot more to do on that one. We just got to wait for it to rust now. 2,000 years later. It's been an hour. Let's see how she's doing. Oh, baby. Would you look at that. I guess the directions are probably correct. It's probably about four hours with or without heat. It's part of the process. Part of the process. And for the record, my squirter works amazing. Fills her up with steam, rusts her away. One eternity later. It's now 11 o'clock. I've applied my second layer. As you can see, it's getting a nice plum color. There's a reason why they call it slow rust bluing. Yep, you figured it out. So yeah, it's 11 o'clock and uh, I'm tired. I'm just getting tired. I don't think I'm signing off just yet, but uh, let's go take a look at the stock. I've been really thinking about this crack and it's really starting to bother me, but I'm gonna have a little bit more into it than I think. And that's just because I, I'm always somewhat, ah, it's gonna be fine. It's gonna be fine, it's gonna be easy. This is my final edit of the night. I'm gonna put one final coat on this, but just look at how magnificent it's starting to look. Now, it's got that nice brown, big rough rag. Up and down, try to get any kind of scale that may be on it off. Even out the brown a little bit. Man, she's beautiful. I know. Freaking beautiful. She's crazy. It's been a long day, don't you think? I've been here for like 10 hours. Where am I? I'm gonna get one more coat on all these parts and then we're gonna let it set overnight. It's gonna come in in the morning. And we're just gonna start boil. But from what I'm seeing here, this is gonna look fantastic. So, once again, same as before, do the hard parts first. It's got that nice brown color to it. Love it. Let's take one last look. I'm gonna sit in here at about 100, 100 degrees all night. All night, that's what they're gonna do. They're gonna sit in here for at 100 degrees all night and then we'll come back in the morning and finish up. Good morning. So we made it back into the shop today. It's a little bit brisk this morning. It's like 30 degrees outside. Stock looks pretty good so far, but we got a thing going on. What the fuck? Yeah, it's got an addition, which I didn't see. I assumed that it had just been carved in, but then once it sat in acetone overnight, all the wood filler to fill the screw holes, it just, it just melted right away. So I gotta go get some more wood filler because I really don't want to take the time to drill it out and fill it with dowels and glue and all that. So I'm gonna get some wood filler. I gotta to run to the store for that real quick. The barrel looks amazing here. Oh my God, look at that. It's just a beauty. Gotta go get some filler and then we're gonna come back. I gotta tape off all the checkering on that stock so we can start sanding on it a little bit just to get the remaining finish out of it. And then uh, we'll get the bluing tank all fired up We'll throw the barrel and all the parts down inside of it. I'm gonna let you see that. It's amazing every time. You, you drop it down and it just turns black as coal instantly. Yeah, my goal is to be almost completely done. Definitely done with the barrels. I'll let them cure in some kerosene for a couple days and then I can just work on getting the oil finish, the finish onto the wood while it cures. 
Got our wood filler. Got our epoxy resin. Slow cure. So now I have to tape up the checker. Plan on saving it. It's just a good idea. And also, I've got to get recoil pad screwed back onto it. Because anytime you're sanding a stock, what happens is you sand it and then your wood shrinks below the size of your recoil pad. And that's okay if you don't care. If you want it to look nice, you want to make sure that these meet each other. And these are just, this is a pack mire. Pack mire. They're designed to be sanded, which is good. Which is perfect. So that's what I'm gonna do now. Got the tape. And we're just gonna start by laying it over and we'll cut it. Take a razor blade, cut it like that. Beautiful. In it. Got the butt plate back on, recoil pad. Got the check ring all taped up. I'm gonna start at 320 grit. I really don't need very much. Um, I could actually probably do 400, but I'm gonna start at 320 grit, grit lightly, and I'm gonna work my way up to like 600 because I want a high gloss finish on this stuff. So if you ever want to know what your woods are looking like, don't get it wet. A little bit of water is all it takes. Drag, rip it off. This is what a satin finish would look like. That's what a gloss finish would look like. Satin, gloss. I'm actually, honestly, really happy with how that looks. It's beautiful, is it not? Good enough for the girls we date. All right, so we got the stock soaking in acetone now that we just finished sanding it all up. We're gonna let that sit for a little bit. In the meantime, we're gonna go ahead and fire up the bluing tank because uh, I just can't wait any longer. It looks that good. Like, just look how perfect it looks. Oh my God, oh my God. Oh, baby. Ready for the magic? Now we're gonna wait for this to boil real fast. I know. We're gonna do bluing now, and then once we get that finished, we're gonna get the stock out of the acetone, get it all glued together, start going back together. It's time. It's time. With the exception of, you know. Ready? I'll show you a thing. But I'm gonna give you a bird's eye view of exactly what it looks like to be an alchemist. I'm gonna do some science. Oh, just like that. Ready? Fast. If that doesn't get your rocks hard, I don't know what will. So I'm gonna put you into the tripod. You're gonna get to watch. It's gonna be awesome. It goes from red to black in like five minutes. Not even, like a minute. And I'm gonna do, where I'm gonna get the other camera out so we can get a real good look at this. It's been officially 25 hours since we started working on this barrel, right? And it started out as shit, and then it went to scary shit like it is right now. Like I just ruined this gun, and it's gonna go black. And we're gonna card it off, and it's gonna be beautiful. Just look at that. Already. Black as coal. We're gonna let them sit for about 15 minutes. We're gonna let them boil. And then we're gonna pull it out. We'll cart it all off and we should have a wonderful blue. Look at that. Isn't that just amazing? 
Look at that. I know. It's absolutely amazing. I know it looks flat, but there's an oxidized layer on the outside of it. To get that shine, the bluing shine, you have to then remove it and hit it with some 4 aught steel wool or a parting wheel if you have one. Most people don't have one. I don't have one. So we're going to uh, we're gonna let that boil for another 10 minutes and then pull it out, card it, just look it over, see if it's dark enough for our liking. And if it is, then we're gonna dunk it into a vat of kerosene and let it sit for about 24 hours. It's been about 20 minutes. Everything is pulled out. Now we're over here and uh, you can see now, it's got the oxidation layer on the outside, so what we're gonna do now, we're gonna take a piece of 4-aught steel wool, and we're just gonna clean it off. If you do get any moisture, don't press hard on it, because there's a chance that the steel wool with the moisture or the oil or anything that may get on it will wipe the bluing away. So you just wanna be a little bit careful here. It's probably gonna be hot, you know, be careful with that too. I am wearing gloves, but that's just a ah, force of habit. I had, you know, here we go. We're just gonna take it. Oh my god, look at that. With the freshly blued barrels and all the parts, it's time to dip them into kerosene. Look at that. See if we can get it in some light action going on. This is what the barrel will look like when it is coated in oil. This gives you an actual representation. Once you do this step though, you have to start all over. So don't go dipping it in kerosene until you're ready, until you're done, like officially done. I'll go ahead, grab up these parts here. Just throw them in there and let them sit for about 24 hours. You can let them soak for up to 48 hours if you're feeling really concerned about them, but I wouldn't be. So last thing that I'm gonna do today that is the finished 340 stock with the exception of the glue. We're gonna go ahead and epoxy it together so that we have no no concerns, no worries. You ready? I'm ready. I'm, I'm, I'm ready. There's only one way to go, that's forward. So we gotta get this slow cure epoxy mixed up and then you got some working time, about 30 minutes, which isn't very long. I'm not really worried about any kind of overflow. I feel like I'm going to have a hard time getting it into this crack, but I'm going to grab a heat gun and I'm just going to lay the epoxy on top of it and blow the heat gun onto it to try to heat it up and send it down into the crack. I've also got to repair this crack here. So then we just start mixing. Take this, line her up where she goes. There we have it. Nice cheek piece bonded. We're gonna go ahead and take acetone, wipe this all down here. Remember, yellow rag. I went ahead and got myself a pair of snap ring pliers just so then I can pry open the cracks, get the epoxy down in. We're gonna go ahead and try to take care of the main crack first, just because it's the scariest, and I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this or not. We're gonna go ahead, get right on the edge there, pry that crack open. We're gonna do our best to just jam it down in there. this glue in itself to the table because that would suck. Let's see if we can get a little bit of boil in action going on. As you can see, we got the glue to punch out the other side. So let's go ahead and get this all clamped up together and then we'll let it sit overnight. Here. Day three. Last night we got the stock glued all back together and we let it cure. I had it clamped down to the bench here so far. It looks pretty 
amazing. And it's nice and strong too. No more flex, no more give, no more wanting to throw up. Um, so that leaves us with the final steps with the stock. All we're gonna do now, I'm gonna tape off the checkering. I want it to stay a natural color. And I'm gonna go ahead and stain the rest of the stock. And then once we let that cure for a few hours, we can go ahead and start getting some oil on this. I know you didn't get to see me sanding off the glue here. I had some excess glue. Let's see if we can get a nice close up on that crack. But it's all glued together and it's nice and strong. I'm, I'm happy enough with it being that it's just a 22 horn. And uh, yeah, so that's what we're gonna do today. I'm gonna finish up sanding just a little bit. I'm gonna touch up a couple spots. We're gonna sand it to 600 grit and then we're gonna go ahead and get this taped up and get it stained. So let's do that. I actually kind of like the, the look of the, the darker checkering now that I see it in person. Yep, that's what we're doing. We don't even have to tape it off then. Okay, now we're gonna wipe it off one last time with some mineral spirits and then we'll let it dry without any heat and we'll go ahead and stain it. And being that the wood is so dry after soaking and acetone for a day, it's going to eat up this mineral spirits. Stock's all dry. We're going to go ahead and stain it now. One thing that I went ahead and did is I diluted my stain with some mineral spirits just so I can control the color a little better. It's going to go on a little less dark all at once, but that's exactly what I want. I want it to, I want to ha if I have to add an extra coat, I don't want to go ahead and try to strip it off. Now this particular color that I'm using is called Jacobine and it's from Minwax. It was just cheap stuff that I had and I've got a whole pile of it laying over here of different flavors and colors and whatever. Oh, you know, coffee bean, ebony, whatever. But uh, I think this is going to go really well with this particular piece. Of so let's go ahead and do it. That's exactly what I was going for. This is a perfect color mixture for that piece of walnut. Yep, beautiful. Coat two. Tell me, where does it hurt? Coat number three. little trick that I learned when I was doing Stevens it was a Stevens 22 when you're done staining if you take a light wipe with mineral spirits afterwards check this out ready activates all the grain gives you that 3d look and this is with no finish on it mind you you wait until we get some finish on it and that's gonna pop like crazy so now we can let this one dry Tomorrow, we're gonna to go ahead and start hitting it with true oil. Now, we're actually gonna tape this off. That way we don't have to run over this with a, with a checkering tool. And I like the dark color on it. So, it usually takes between eight to 12 coats for a high gloss finish. That could be a video in itself, but we're gonna to try to cram everything in. I really like making the hour, hour and 20 minute videos. Not that I couldn't split them up into 19 different videos, it's just, Look at that, beautiful. We'll check back in tomorrow. So the time has finally come to finish the stock. You can pretty much use any kind of oil you want. All of them come with the learning curve. There is no one size fits all, you know, perfect finish. Um, everybody uses everything from boiled linseed oil to 
epoxy resin to um, lacquer. So it's all up to you, whatever you want to do, whatever kind of finish you like best. I personally, having a background in instruments, use a lot of true oil. I really like the, the hardened finish. It's also got a dryer in it, so if you're looking to apply like 12 or 14 or, you know, 37 coats, you can do so without it taking three months, which is good. So that's what we're going to do tonight. We got to get some final coats on, on the stock. I already did a few during my, uh, my time that I can't record, but I'm going to show you my process for finishing the stock after you've got about seven or eight coats on it. I usually go with about 12 and then let it cure for a couple days and then sand the hell out of it and really, really shiny. You know, what's really nice about True Oil is it's really, really forgiving. If you have, say you're not paying attention and you get a run, that's fine. You let it harden for an hour or two hours or three hours, you can go ahead and wet sand it. I usually use mineral spirits with you know, 1,000 grit sandpaper or even uh, 4 out steel wool. Just about anything you want to do on a gun stock will work. It's a gun, not a $9,000 table. I've used everything from cleaning patches to cotton swabs to ear cleaners to do this. doesn't really matter so long as you get a good application on it. I'm going to use a dirty microfiber rag. It's just got a whole shitload of wax on it, which is fine. It's not going to hurt it. So for the, my first seven coats, what I did was I applied it by rubbing it into the grain, back and forth, and I'd go over it twice. Now I'm gonna start long stroking it. And now what I'll do, I'll hold it up to the light, specifically where you are. And I wanna just check, notice right here, a big old streak. I'm just gonna go ahead and run right over top of that. And with here, nice big old streak. This is the tedious portion because, and like I said, as this hardens, it will flatten out, but you don't want to give it the chance to push away a run, and then you're, you're going to be upset. All right, so it's like day nine. I've given the stock a chance to cure. Now we need to sand it and start polishing it. I'm going to show you how to sand the stock. This one's going to be a high gloss finish. After that, we'll just go ahead and hello, sir. Go ahead and polish it, and be all done. That means bluing's all done, stock's all done. In a long road, everyone is. When you're ready for this step, all you need is four out steel wool, some wet sandpaper or dry wet sandpaper that'll run up to like 2,000 grit, 2,500 grit, and you need some mineral spirits. And first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use some steel wool, just to knock down some of the sharp edges around the checkering where we have some build up from the finish. And then we're going to go right into like 1500 grit and we're going to wet sand the whole thing. I'm not pushing too hard, just enough. That I can knock down some of those edges. So that's really all I'm worried about with this. This is the look that we're going for. Hello. <sighs> Just finished her up with the 2000 grit. We're gonna hit it once with 2500. And then we're gonna let it dry and get to polishing. Let's go over it one last time. We're gonna feel for any rough edges or bumps, lumps, anything like that. Here's a little secret. A lot of people have a lot of trouble getting a really high shine out of true oil. It's because the process is wrong. This isn't anywhere near as hard as paint, so you can't use a polishing compound on this. Just, it won't work. It will not work. So what we'll do, I'm gonna get this all dried off, wiped off. We're gonna go to the bench and we're gonna polish it. If you're going for a high gloss finish, there is a chance that you're gonna burn right through your finish. 
when you go to polish. As with any time you're polishing, when you first begin, you're gonna use something a little more coarse and work your way down. It'll start off foggy. The more you polish, the more shiny it gets. So I'm gonna be starting with Meguiar's diamond cut, then we're gonna go to hand glaze, and then after that, we're just gonna do a wax buff. Now we're going to move on to hand glaze. Okay, so the final bit for our Nuba Wax. When you're done with your cutting compounds and your wax, the best way, notice how this is foggy and this is not, the best way to get your high shine is actually hand rubbing the finish. Put some wax on your fingers and just push as hard as you can. I mean, really, you're trying to just polish out. Your, your hands are going to be so tired by the time you're done, but it's worth it. Trust me, it's worth it. Now, if you've got dainty hands, this probably won't work, but I've got the baseball gloves. They're just solid calluses, which... So I'm, I'm assuming a piece of denim or something like that would also work pretty decent. I'm going to do that about three more times, and then... Uh, it's nine o'clock. We've got to get the action all together so we can finish this video. We need to get this action back together. The phone's dying, so I'm gonna to try to show you as much as I can. Once we get the action back together, we'll go ahead and drop it in the stock and we'll call this one done. Ready? Let's do it. Well guys, another one saved from the inevitability of time. This thing really just turned out amazing. I know you missed the final assembly. Camera died last night, but I just had to give you guys a glimpse of just how perfect this thing turned out. Unbelievable. Anyway, if you like this kind of content, leave me a like and subscribe. If there was a way that I could have done it better, drop into the comments. Let me know how you would have done it. I, would, I love learning stuff. If you just want to say hi, drop down into the comments. And if you want to see more, I got another video coming here in a couple days of a Savage 340. It's not as in-depth as this one. I'm just going to warn you now. It's a stock refinish. We're going to go with a natural finish on it and a satin finish. So anyway, you guys have a good day and uh, carry on.